when the commodity prices collapsed in Malaysia in the 1980s and we told the government, see, all the people are poor. The government said, why blame me? And then we said, actually, the government is right. It's something to do with the world system. Then we said, uh, the world system is to blame for many of these things that we blame our government for. So uh, we, we, we should go to the roots of the problem. So Idris said, uh, World Bank, IMF, that time not no WTO yet. Uh, these are the problems. And then the commodity prices, the commodities exchanges, and the multinational companies mm. taking out the profits and everything. So that was the beginning at that time of uh, structural adjustment. It was in 1984, we had the seminar on the Third World. So the Third World seminar took place. And out of the seminar was created the Third World Network. It came out with a 70-page declaration that became the declaration of the Third World Network. Before that, uh, we did not get involved in the United Nations activities, except, you know, maybe UNDP holds a conference or something. You know. So this opened up the NGOs to the UN was more strong actually we did it. I think he understood now. Nah. You want to save the environment, yeah. you've got to get the NGOs in. I mean the governments are not going to save the yeah. environment. So we took part in the preparatory process and uh, we found out two things. One is if you have ideas and you organize well among the NGOs, you can make a big impact on the NGOs. Before that, the southern views and perspectives were represented by Northern NGOs on behalf of the South. So we said, thank you very much, but, uh, and please continue to do that, but we will also speak for the South. So before the arrival of Third World Network really into the international NGO arena, there were very few Southern NGOs and they were more local NGOs because NGOs are local in the South. They don't have resources to spare to look at the global picture. But after our Third World Conference, we decided to set aside resources to look at global issues. And it meant for me a big shift as well. I continued to basically manage the Secretariat of CAP. But more and more, my time would be on TWM, okay, on international things. So in 1992, we had the Earth Summit. Well, the thing is, we took it seriously. Uh, we took part in the there were three or four preparatory meetings. Three in New York, one in Geneva. These are called preparatory meetings. Every time you have a big UN conference, you have preparatory meetings yeah. in which the tax will be put forward and people will be wrangling over the tax and there will be a lot of lobbying. Plus side events by NGOs. Okay? So this was our introduction to the UN system. So in New York, we could offer certain things. So we would write three, two, three reports every day on what's happening at the official level. Who's putting forward the tax? Why is America blocking this? The G77 says this. Africa is saying this. So day by day, issue and dynamics uh-huh. of the negotiations. Okay? That is very valuable. So we would reproduce that three articles a day. Call it, uh, you know, Third World Network Update. And we would print 500 copies, put it on the table, everybody reads. And say, no, oh, third world network. My God, how did they do it? This happened yesterday. Now we have three reports. Two, then we would uh, run our own side events. And then people come and they get to know us. Three, we take part in other people's side events. Yep. Four, we come out with uh, research papers, policy papers. Some are five pages, some are 30 pages. Yep. You know? And we would put it on the table. And then the diplomats also pick it up, the NGOs pick it up. And then we basically decided to inject the development equity dimension into the environment. So the developing countries were very strong. They said, if you don't put development on par, then you have an environment conference with disciplines on the environment, which will affect our development. And then you have the technology to move ahead. 
or you have already chopped all your forests, now you're telling us not to chop any forests. We know we shouldn't chop forests, but we need something altern- alternative to the forest if you don't want us to chop the forest. So, where is the money? Where is the technology? Where is the capacity building? If you don't give this to us, then don't ask us to do environmental things as an international obligation. We will do it as a national obligation on our own. So that became a very strong view into the official uh, agenda and was recognized because on every chapter they would put how much resources are needed by developing countries to implement this and uh, what are the technological cooperation we need to have. Plus, we took up big environmental issues, okay, like uh, GMOs are bad, which nobody took up at that time. So they can't say you are not environmental. We were more radical on the environment than the environment NGOs. Plus, we injected the development dimension. Okay. So I think this was how TWN emerged uh, with the international NGOs. But actually, just as important, this is how TWN emerged with the governments. So we cemented a good relationship with the G77 and China. We would help them to draft papers and all that and texts. So that learning how to work with NGOs yes. of the South, yeah. that they can be very useful. Yeah. And we learning that the governments need actually assistance and that many of them are very dedicated and very competent. That kind of partnership developed through the real process yeah. that then continued into the social summit in yeah. 1995 yeah. and then, then into the UNFCC. 